Hey guys, welcome back to AF Farms for another episode of Silverine Forest. So currently we have a worker driving down to the barrel factory to help us move some barrels around. Uh, we have basically got our lodgepole pines fully grown. So this should be 36 meters in length, which it is. Uh, our cotton is ready to harvest. So you can see this over here. So what we're going to do today is we are going to go and lease a cotton harvester. So I wasn't able to get one in the used vehicle sales, unfortunately. So let's have a look at which one we're going to go with. So cotton harvesters, cotton technology. I'm probably going to go with the Case Modular Express 635 just because of the cost factor. And this thing will do a square bale as well, which is just easy to transport with base game equipment. So let's go ahead and lease that. All right, let's get this thing underway. So we are going to, I'm just going to drive it straight there and then get it underway. So let's have a quick look in the cabin. Check it out if you haven't seen this before. Pretty cool machine. I mean, I really do love the detail in, in the cabin view. I hope for the next game they make the displays actually uh, a little bit more relevant to what's actually happening when you're harvesting and doing the work. Like it tells us our ground speed there, which is accurate. Uh, just cool, cool detail. Like for a simulation game, this is what you want. So it's a six row harvester. So we should just be able to dive straight in. So let's uh, unfold this while we're driving. And uh, anything else we need to do, let's turn the harvester on. Turn on automatic drop. So I'm gonna leave that off because I wanna control uh, where the drop happens. So I'm just gonna send this guy straight in. And then we will deal with the We'll deal with the um, unharvested sections later on. Okay, cool. So he's going to take a little while to do that. Okay, next thing we need to do is let's check in on our... So we're going to move some of these pallets around and then we're going to go build the spinnery. And hopefully by that time we'll have a bailout and we can... First and foremost, get get our boat the fabric it requires I mean realistically it's probably going to take one more game day for that to happen so let's just put this one here so we'll do a stack of barrels and a stack of buckets So obviously the limiting factor with the barrels and the buckets was the steel production, which we now obviously have. So we've pretty much got every element we need for every production chain to work to full capacity. At least all the, the timber based, wood based um, items. So I'll just leave that over here. So I'm just finding it easy to have a forklift in close proximity to each one of these points because it just allows me to get in there, spend a couple of minutes moving the product around in preparation for easy, um, easy transit and pick up. So let's go double stack. So double stacking is very handy to save space. Some items you can triple stack, but they do get a little bit unruly with the physics. But if you're OCD and you love perfection, 
lining the pallets up perfectly. I mean, you'll have a, you'll have an absolute ball. Me, I just want to get them moved so I can move on to the next job. And that's the great thing about this game; you can just play it, play it the way you want to play it, and just have have fun while you're doing it. Really, like I like to do a bit of everything. I just like. I think the main thing I try to focus on is just being as efficient as possible, so I can get get uh, more done in less time. Because I do have a bit of limited time to play play the game, I just want to make sure every play session is productive, uh, productive as possible. Sometimes can't always, but things go wrong. You learn things. Um, you got to problem solve. That's part of the experience. So that's all good as well. All right, let's. Uh, I'll let those barrels just hang there for a minute. Okay, so he's 14%. We want to head over to our this one here, and we're going to place the spinnery down. So the spinnery is going to go somewhere here. So we want factories cell points. So I'm just going to go all the way to the left and then scroll through each one. So bakery we don't need, carpentry we don't need, dairy, grain mill, spinnery. So we've got that spinnery. Let's see if there's another one. Sometimes there's two. So it just depends on. Okay, I want to check where the uh, the main thing I'm concerned about is just where the product spawns. So that one spawns in front of where you drop it off. Okay. What about this one? So the drop off point is to the side, and the pick up point is out the front. So I think I will just go with this one. They're the same price. At the end of the day, um, question is, I mean, do I put it? I just want to make sure I've got good access to pick these bales up, because I am going to have to drop the cotton off. So uh, let's have a look. Maybe over here might be better. Yeah, this might work. Probably not very aesthetically pleasing, but it'll get the job done. So if we back in there, so we've got good access from the road. Uh, we have got reasonable access. Actually, I think I feel like I'm I feel like I'm more comfortable over here, to be honest. Actually, let's have a look at the other one. So it's very important to consider your building placement and work on it as required because if you if you stuff it up, it's going to cost you. You're going to lose half of the building value straight up. Um, so what I can do here is if I put that there, I'm still going to get pallets out. I've got nice access to the road. Yeah, I think this is probably going to be where I'm going to put it. And then I can store I can store cotton bales in and around the delivery area, and it's not going to impact the it's not going to impact the area too much. So let's just so what I'm talking about here is if if I run over there, the delivery point for the cotton is sort of directly in front of where the pallets spawn. But I've basically got all this area to work in to move these pallets in and out. And then I've got a nice access point to back the cotton trailer in to drop off the uh, cotton bales. So let's get our uh, additional equipment we need for cotton. So we need a cotton trailer. So let's just do... Let's just do probably... That'll do two bales, this'll do one. So let's go the lizard module four. So let's uh, lease that initially. And we are gonna use our lizard pickup to probably need to cull some of these vehicles to be honest. So I'm not having to cycle through so many. 
we can use our lizard pickup too. Actually, what we're going to do is turn this belt on. Yep. Keep topping up our iron furnace. So this will be able to quickly um, transport the bale back and forth. Should just work off, a, off of a tow bar, tow ball situation. And then while we're driving past here, we'll quickly just check in on the roller coaster. So prefab balls and buckets. So we need to get some prefab balls and buckets. So we'll do that while the cotton is being harvested. Prefab balls are easy. Let's Okay, let's leave that here ready to go. So let's go into our trusty trailer combo. Go pick up these prefab balls and then we'll go get some buckets after that. And that should give us enough to get onto the next stage of the roller coaster. And then we can get our cotton harvested into the spinnery and then we can start getting some fabric. Now the other thing you can do with cotton is take it to the tailor shop and turn it into clothes. So clothes fetch about $20,000 per pallet. So uh, where am I going here? Prefab walls. And I think I mentioned before our lodge poles are basically all grown to full height. So we're going to start cutting some 15 meter lengths for our new road train setup, which we haven't built yet. I may do that probably next episode. Uh, I'm probably going to cut down some of these trees because you might notice the frame rate's getting a little bit janky. And that is because the trees in this game, there we go, prefab balls are getting picked up, beautiful. Especially when they're densely packed, it can cause uh, frame rate issues. Alright, so we've got one set of prefab balls. I'm just going to back this in. And then hopefully it'll pick up the rest. Okay, not getting that one for some reason. going on there. Okay, this is a bit weird, but anyway. There we go. See so if I pick up this other one here. Now oh, look, we've got 4,000 litres. We'll just run with that for now. Okay, let's get this over there. I hope for the next game they include more projects like the boat and the roller coaster because it's just a, it's just something that you it's because obviously it's a sell point right and it's a one-time build so it just gives you an incentive to get it completed it does take a while to complete so it's something you can supplement your regular gameplay with I mean, obviously this is uh, a wood-focused, logging-focused fo map, but if they add new production chains and new production items, you know, there's no... I mean, there's probably uh, quite a few options for other things you could build. Okay, I picked up tables for some reason. That's a bit annoying. So I'm just going to have to drop these off. I mean, even if it was just just logging focused, that'd be cool. That'd be fine as well. Because I mean, not everyone's into logging, obviously, but a fair chunk of the community definitely love it. All right, I think we need to get buckets actually. Uh, prefab walls. We've got plenty of prefab walls, and we need buckets. So buckets should be the last thing we need 
to get this next stage completed. So let's go and grab them. And as soon as that harvester, so I should get an indication for our cotton harvester to tell us that it is ready to drop a bale. Once that bale is ready to drop, we'll go pick it up and then let that worker keep harvesting that field. So barrels are there. Buckets are around this side. Okay, that's working out pretty well. Let's see if I can get this. Nice. So 7,000 litres of buckets should be plenty. I've got a feeling it's not even going to take all these, but if I can leave them in there, which we should be able to, in the vicinity I mean, so not actually in the storage point, but whatever surplus we can just keep on hand uh, as, as we need it, kind of the same way we have been. Alright, so we should be able to overload these. So it didn't take very many at all. So is there no storage for buckets? I find that strange. Okay, let's move this forklift so I can actually turn. And I'm hoping they they release this map in the new or well, the next title potentially as a starter map, so like they did with Erlengrat, just gives people who didn't have the platinum expansion the opportunity to experience um, Silver Run Forest. I mean, I never really got into Erlengrat all that much. I did play it a little bit, um, but it really. It's definitely a nice map, like definitely very good. But just didn't really float my boat. Whereas I'm finding Silver Run Forest to be quite enjoyable. I think it's mainly because it is a focused sort of map, like it is it is forestry, so it's built it's built that way from the ground up. Like if you come into this thinking you're gonna be doing a massive um, arable farm I mean yes you could do it but you're really going sort of against the grain of what the developers have tried to create okay that's good Let's go check on the cotton harvester. Okay, so he's just trying to do that little scarecy bit. So let's go and I'm just going to pick this up manually. So this is that little bit of field area which is a bit not square. So I don't really like these fields that aren't square. I really find them quite annoying. I mean, that's just me. But I prefer to have fields more, recta more rectangular and square. And if they are going to have a taper, have a unif like a have a smooth point-to-point -point taper. Whereas this, I don't know what shape you would call this, but okay, let's turn the lift, turn the harvester off so we can get a bit of speed up. Because what you end up doing is you've got wasted movement here. So me having to drive to the other end of the field without harvesting just is a waste of time. I mean, it's got to be done in this case, but if the field was a different shape, I wouldn't have to necessarily worry about it. But once again, just my opinion, it's not, it's not game breaking. It's just a little bit of one of those sort of pet peeve things that everybody has. Okay, 
Okay, so still got a fair way to go on that, so that's going to be taking a little bit longer. Um, Alright, so our buckets. So let's go back to our roller coaster quickly. Just want to make sure we are. Uh, yeah, let's try and put a few. I'm going to get a couple of ballot, uh, pallets of buckets. And see if it'll take any more. Yeah, so it's not going to take any more. So I don't think we can store them, eh? That's basically what I'm getting from that. Uh, prefab walls. So prefab walls, 3,000 litres. So yeah, we should be able to get the next stage on that one. Uh, let's cut down some trees, actually. So what I want to do is I want to test out the 15 metre cut length. So what I'm going to do is change it to 15. Turn this harvester, tree harvester on. So I'm going to cut down one because I just want to confirm that actually that is the correct size. So this is for our new trailer. So it's 36 meters, so we get two lengths of 15 and then a six meter length. So it could be more trouble than it's worth, but let's just see. So a 36 meter truck tree I doubt is going to fit in that trailer actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it first and then we will get the trailer over here and I'm just going to eyeball it and see what the best cut length is going to be alright if I can line this up it's been a while okay so what I do is I pull it, cut it down, pull it out of the line, so I want to get it over this way, so I'll get it out into some open space, just so we can sort of assess this properly. Okay, so that should remain in position let's switch trailers so this is the old the old logging trailer now the benefit to the new one that I've selected is it's a lot more stable and it can be configured for a road train I mean there's probably other trailers out there that can do the same but this is just the one that I've discovered uh, if you know of any other options for dual trailer systems please let me know because I really would like to have the best that I can. Okay, so a whole tree is not going to work. So we've got obviously significant, but I reckon that'll do 20 meters, eh? Looking at that. Okay, let's just do a 15 meter cut. Okay, 15 meter cut. Get the cut length correct. And we'll just see how that looks. Okay, jump in the truck again. So it's worthwhile going through this process when you get a new trailer, just so you're sure that when you do start cutting, that you're not going to run into any issues. So if I'm looking at this, basically that's one end. So it kind of comes up to the end of the trailer there. And that one just sticking out of the end. So this is perfect length for 15 meter bales, it would appear. So let's just double check that. So there's the there's the end of it. Kind of lines up with the red part of the part of the start of the trailer. Then you've got basically a half a meter or to the first bunk rail, and then this one, the end of the log sticks out the back quite a bit and yeah okay that's probably going to be perfect 
So let's jump back in here, cut another length of 15. And then we're left with a six meter. So I think what I'll do with the six meters is if I can see it, they can actually pick them up. It's only 90 kilos. I'll just stockpile these and put them in here. So I'm not wasting anything. Let's just, uh, what I'm going to try to do now is pick these logs up and load them. We'll just see how that looks. So here we're going for time. Cool. All right, I'm going to switch log forks here. So because I'm doing one log at a time here, I want to switch to a smaller grapple just to make life a bit easier. So the the one that I was using, the modded one, it's great for multiple logs, whereas this has got a smaller, smaller opening. So it'll clamp, it'll clamp one or two logs in nicely, whereas the other won't. So that's why we're going this path. Okay. Actually, let's just double check that was a 36 meter length because I'm looking at some of these and they do look a bit shorter so they all should be full size now so that is 36 that is 36 cool so two 15 meter bales then a six meter end cut that we can chuck into the sawmill this first one okay so the way you kind of do this is you get sort of in position um, let's open that up again see if we can't get underneath it sort of scoop it Um, the telly handle with, with a log fork probably would have been better here. But let's just persevere. Because obviously these work better when they are. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Okay, let's get a top view happening. It's a little bit probably too far forward, so if I just go forward a touch on the trailer. So actually I don't mind if it's overhanging the back a little bit more than the front. Okay, let's get this unloaded. Okay. Looking pretty good. Alright, let's just try and see. We're going to probably move this out of the way. So I'll strap that down. Turn this trailer around. Now I'm wondering if the Ponderosa pine might actually be better. Because it's got a thicker, uh, thicker trunk. All the way through. Whereas this does taper off quite a bit on the second cut. Okay, get this closed. Should be relatively close to the middle. Just want to take it nice and easy. Whoop, not too fast. So in this case, it's actually easier just to move the trailer just while I'm testing. Let's check our position. So let's just swing that under and then drive forward a touch. OK, 
Okay, I reckon that's going to be pretty close. Okay, so we've got a little bit of overhang on the back. Could probably do with a bit more overhang over here. I mean, probably a 16 meter, but then you start to really, I mean, if I do an 18 meter cut, that's really, t but I don't think this harvester can do 18. So maybe that's something I need to look at because then that'd be two cuts per tree with no waste. And I would probably have, so this is a 15 meter cut, so add another meter, that's 16. And then another meter this way, that's 18. Mm. So something to think about actually. Might have to look at getting a modded a modded um, harvester, tree harvester that is. So yeah, interesting. Alright guys, we'll leave it there for this video. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'm gonna go and do a bit of research, see if I can't find a, a better configuration for this. Otherwise we are gonna run with the um, the 15 meter bale and we are going to run with two trailers for our road train i mean this is looking pretty effective but it just means i don't have to deal with that third six meter cut uh manually so either pick it up walk it over to the sawmill or do something else with it so i'm going to do that um, our cotton harvester is plugging away nicely so obviously we've got our first bale so we'll go and drop that off and then we'll pick it up in the next episode. So thanks for watching guys. Really appreciate it. Like, subscribe, comment, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.